Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yet again to another great episode of Bahrain Now. I'm your host, Khalid Hijris, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around the Kingdom of Bahrain. So stay tuned and we'll be back with more. The British University of Bahrain's team, Tempra, has represented the Kingdom of Bahrain in Injaz Al Arab's 18th Young Entrepreneurship Celebration, which was recently held in Dubai, and has proudly won the Company of the Year Award in the university track. With such a remarkable achievement, the British University of Bahrain became the first university to earn this award since the establishment of Injaz Bahrain in 2005. And to talk more about that, we are pleased to be joined by the team members here, Bayan Salman, Hala Hisham, as well as her mentor, Khalid Abdullah. Welcome, how are you all doing today? Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you guys for winning uh, Company of the Year. Now, first to the students, um, you know, how do you feel about this achievement? Um, thank you very much, actually. We, were, we are very, very greatly proud of the ach achievements, especially being that we are one of the first universities to have won the Company of the Year Award representing Bahrain, and uh, especially being that we have you know, kept all of our efforts and hard work and dedication into this company and the team and just overall our collaboration with one another, like which led to a great success of us winning this award. It's always brilliant whenever we have anyone from Injaz on because it's always great to see how this um, this opportunity gives you guys so much um, to explore in terms of uh, collaborating with one, one another, uh, knowing your own skills and to, to actually take a a skill like a like a concept and then to bring it to life so I mean I, I, I always love hearing answers like yours and uh, now for the mentor um, now the British University of Bahrain has officially become the first university to achieve this award uh, since the establishment of Injaz in 2025, uh, 2005 so what does that achievement mean? Well, for me personally it means a lot because I was one of the first volunteers in Injaz Bahrain uh, since 2000 and 2005 the establishment of Injaz and I would really like to thank Her Highness Hassa Al Khalifa for all of her support throughout this 20 years. And of course, the executive director, Ms. Hana Sirwani, and all of the coordinators of Injaz, amazing coordinators of Injaz. It means a lot, of course. And to BUB, uh, being the first university to be crowned as the uh, champion in the regional, uh, it, it means a lot to us, it means a lot to Bahrain. And of course, when we did it, that's exactly wh why we wanted to do it. We want to have the best representation of Bahrain and that's exactly what we did. So I'm really glad and happy of the achievement, of course. Clearly, and I mean, really, you guys, like your work has clearly paid off and I love the trophy, by the way, congratulations again. Uh, it's always nice to have the hardware as well, isn't it? Um, and now let's talk a little bit about the efforts that led up to this. Like, I'm sure that this was a massive undertaking. What did, what did you guys' schedules look like? So uh, before I answer your question, I also wanted to thank Her Highness Sheikh Hassan Al Khalifa and uh, His Excellency Sheikh uh, Khalifa Al Khalifa, the chairman of BUB. Um, their supports have really played a pivotal role in our success. In terms of the efforts, we started regionals training four months ago within JAZZ. Uh, we were meeting almost every day. And um, upcoming to the regionals competition, we were meeting every single day. So we worked really, really hard collaboratively and together. Alhamdulillah, the hard work paid off. Alhamdulillah, and it's always great as well whenever I have teams um, from Injaz, and you guys are no exception, uh, whether it's the mentors, whether it's the students together, everybody just seems to have this um, symbiosis, like you guys like sitting together, it just like I can, I, I can tell you guys are part of one team, right? And now back to the mentor, you worked very closely with this team, um, what would you like to add to that? What, how, how would you describe witnessing their efforts to, to leading up to this achievement? Well, as just Bayan said and Hala, we, we became a family and it's, uh, it's not just three months. Their efforts been there for many, many months before that as well. So me, I'm just the face behind whatever has happened behind the scene. But there are many mentors, uh, Nuri Han, to name a few, of course, Reem Osman, uh, Reem Marhoun, who was not basically with us, but she was also mentoring the high school. And we were exchanging, of course, ideas between each other. So there is so much effort has been happening behind the scene. Uh, when it comes to mentoring part of it, but when it comes also to uh, being their CEO uh, and of course the marketing and PR and all of those uh, fancy names that they've been having as well. And they had really what it takes to be accountable for the responsibilities they have. And whatever you see here is just a celebration of their achievements. So well done team. 
Thank you. I think that that's a beautiful interaction, and I think I, I really like something you said that they, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially like that they were living up to the fancy titles that you were given and uh, what fancy titles they are, I must say. Um, and to talk a bit about that, what were the, what was it like working uh, in accordance to Tempra's values? Uh, what were the values that you, that you engaged with in order to live up to those fancy names? So within Tempra, we have set core values that we follow by on a daily basis, if not just the creation of our project itself. So some of these values include um, innovation, sustainability, care and versatility. And this just all comes down to it's like our core building blocks to how we achieve our successes as along with the creation of our product itself. You know, ensuring that we have sustainability within our product, we curate versatility for our clients and customers and furthermore. Brilliant, and you mentioned sustainability. Now, from your point of view as a mentor, how can Team Tempra, um, how can they sustain their success? How can they keep building on the achievements they've already already gotten? Well, they gained so much into the journey itself. I'm sure they learned a lot about the journey. It was not definitely an easy journey. We had lots of setbacks. We had lots of changes as well happening within the team, but they persisted and they were really uh, amazing when it comes to sustainability, sustaining the team and persistent as well throughout all of the challenges. So my advice to them is just to keep on believing in themselves, keep on believing on the vision that they set for the company and I'm sure they would inspire more others as well to, to follow their leads. Definitely and speaking about inspiration and innovation, can you guys tell us a bit more about the Arctic design and about uh, the materials you guys use? Okay, so with the Arctic design, we uh, it's basically a product that we created that caters to outdoor worker. It's a cooling gear essentially that includes an innovative cooling mechanism which consists of a, a, a water pump that circulates around the gear to ensure uh, that it cools down workers in extreme heat and um, along with that it uh, features uh, an array of features including um, the NFC tag that we provide, the reflective strips on the gear, along with it being a re having removable sleeves. And uh, in addition to that is uh, having a 100% recycled polyester material that uh, encapsulates all of it together. You guys thought of everything though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, speaking about that, can you tell us a little bit more, elaborate a bit more on the used materials? Okay, so the materials, so being that we cater versatility and having that as one of our core values, uh, we've curated different materials to assess to different clients. So for instance, we have the, the standard material, which is 100% recycled polyester, which is made out of essentially 28 recycled water bottles per gear. And then we also feature a, um, a different material, which is a uh, fire retardant material, specifically catering to industrial companies. In addition to that, we have a high visibility material catering to construction workers. You know, I'm in awe on how much thought went into this. Um, it is something that is not only um, this is not progress for progress's sake, right? Like you guys have taken a real world issue, which is the fact that, you know, the weather is inevitable. And wherever you are in the world, I mean, I think as Bahrainis, we usually think of the heat here, but uh, I mean, even, even less intense heat is not really ideal, and especially for long hours. And you guys have taken uh, that very universal experience and you've given it a very clear cut and very futuristic solution um, this is like something out of sci-fi, and I believe I've said that about this project before. Um, I, I'm absolutely sure I've said that before. Um, and now, um, again, from the point of view of a mentor, what is the importance of supporting this type of innovative thinking when it comes to the students of Bahrain? Well, when it comes to the students or the youth of Bahrain, of course, that's the backbone of whatever this future, uh, the country future is. So we really need to focus on them, and that's basically where my heart is, is the development of the youth of Bahrain from now because they would be sustaining this country for the coming uh, generations as well. So it's very important for us to handhold them and give them the responsibilities that INJAZ enables. INJAZ is a vehicle of transformation when it comes to youth and that's basically the opportunities they have. And kudos also to uh, British University for being there as well behind the scene and supporting the students and th that's what we need to have. They've never been students honestly, they've been actual CEO, actual VP of marketing, actual VP of sales and that's what we need to do, we need to give them flavor of what needs to be done for the future of Bahrain and that's basically where our heart should be. And following up with that, what do you guys make of that? Like, he, uh, like your mentor has said, you have been given so many tools in order to bring 
But again, what I would consider something to be something out of sci-fi, you are making a reality, something that could really help a lot of people uh, in, a, in a very relevant sort of way. So it's like, how do you value the support of your mentors, your uh, of Injaz Bahrain and of the British University of Bahrain? So as Mr. Khalid said, um, we're really not just a company, we're, we're a movement essentially. So for us, our mission is to transform outdoor work environments. And by doing that, we want to use the NFC, we want to use our cooling technology and the support that the mentors and in Jaz Bahrain, um, Ms. Israr Junahi, uh, Ms. Khawla, uh, Mr. Khalid uh, and everyone else who has supported us, they've allowed us to actually experience what it's like being on, in these roles and executing things. It's not just an idea, we actually executed the idea. We actually sold and got pre-orders. So it's something really impactful. And even from the British University of Bahrain, they were with us from the beginning, um, giving us any support we needed. And you know, even in decisions, uh, taking decisions, they were there for us as well. So yeah, we're really thankful for it all. You know what I really liked about this entire conversation? I never at any point felt like I, I'm, I'm talking to academic staff or students. I, I felt like, no, I'm talking to people who are fully involved in this initiative and know it you know, front to back. And I think that's just a testament to the program's success and a testament to, to the uh, values and to the hard work that you all put in that made this achievement possible. Uh, so thank you for that. And just to wrap up, I would just like to ask you all for, um, for what would your advice would be for those looking to follow in your footsteps or for anyone looking to get involved uh, with in Jaws Bahrain or any other of the many um, avenues that we have for innovation here in the Kingdom of Bahrain? Okay, I'll, I'll start it off by saying um, the hardest things are often the sweetest wins. So I would say never give up. Um, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. At the beginning, um, there were a few doubts with our idea because some people tried to do it before, but they couldn't do it. And we took that risk, even though we knew that we could be disqualified if we didn't execute it. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And also, just start it. Um, even if you don't have the experience and you don't know if you can fully do it, just, just start it and you're gonna learn along the way. Um, something I'd like to add is uh, to take any form of challenges that you would face as a form of an opportunity to learn and grow from. That's something we've noticed and we've worked around a lot within our company, within our team. Any form of challenge that we face, we would take the opportunity to just pivot off of it and work and learn towards. And so that's something I'd share. For me, I think it's all about the vision. Uh, youth really have uh, amazing potential. It's just that we need to clarify the vision for them so they can see it vividly. And then no matter what happens, no matter challenges that we face as well, if the vision is clear, we would be focusing on the vision and not the obstacles. And that's what we need to basically carry out of our journey as well and have more of the youth to see that they can do miracles if they just believe in the vision. And the vision that I want to portray here is whatever we do here, we do it for Bahrain. So that's very deep. And if that depth of the vision hits the heart, then basically whatever we can do uh, would be a learn and no matter what challenges and obstacles we would have, they would be just smooth sail for all of us. Wonderfully said and from the way that you've all spoken, the attitude, the very positive attitude and very practical way that you guys approach everything, I think again just shows that you guys are deserving of this amazing award and this amazing achievement which is something I think is the beginning. Uh, I think that this is not an end for you guys. I think that this is a beginning for even Definitely. more great things that you'll be doing. And now, um, you guys have probably had quite a, a lot to celebrate recently and um, I'm here to tell you that the celebration is not done. Um, and this time the celebration will be caught on camera uh, here because we have a few people who want to celebrate with you. No way! <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys! Hi. <laughs> 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 Hello. And now the floor is yours. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hi. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> Can I get so excited no. before you go out? No. No. Oh, oh cute. God. This is so cute. You did. You did. <laughs> oh my god, this is so nice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and now let's take a look at what's going on beyond the studio in the following report.
This is our third year of participation at Cityscape uh, Bahrain. We're very happy and excited to be part of this uh, international uh, event of such scale. Um, during our participation, we will be showcasing three of our main projects in Bahrain. Namely, uh, one of them is uh, Nesaim uh, Arad uh, and Besatin Villas, as well as Canal View Apartments in Dilmonia. So again, we're very happy and excited to be here. And this is day two, actually, of our participation. Yesterday, we had a wonderful uh, opening ceremony and uh, a very exciting day. And we look forward to more uh, today and the next uh, three, uh, three days, I guess, yes? Uh, this year we are participating in uh, Cityscape for the third time and uh, we focus on our project uh, Jawharat Al Marjan. The project uh, uh, will be on the, on the, uh, on the tenth uh, island of uh, Durat Al Bahrain project, Durat Al Bahrain Resort. Uh, the project contains uh, around 200 villas. Uh, each villa contains uh, four, four master bedrooms. Okay with the new ideas, uh, new uh, uh, luxury design. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to, uh, this year with Cityscape after the success of the first and second edition of Cityscape. Today we are participating in the third edition with a strategic partnership uh, in this exhibition. In DR, as a master plan, we are always uh, offering the best and uh, the unique uh, solutions for real estate, including the residential, luxurious, and for investment opportunities. Uh, DR is available for everyone. 60% of the whole master plan is available for freehold for any nationality, and the remaining 40% are for local, which giving the best mix for having uh, the good population to improve the, any investment opportunity in DR. Today in Cityscape, we are offering the last stage of uh, a Nassim project, which is uh, the seafront villas, very unique, nice villas on the seafront uh, with uh, special offers for this exhibition period. Looking forward to welcome everyone here in this, in this exhibition. We are very happy to be here, especially in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We think that this exhibition is very important and uh, it's a great uh, way to showcase our projects in Georgia. And uh, we know that uh, people from Bahrain are starting to be very interested in Georgia and there is very good uh, communications between our two countries. So we are really, really happy to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. Being a platinum member with the MR in Dubai out of 23,000 uh, real estate brokers, this is a honor for us and the trust of people in us. That's why we want to explore more and uh, um, attend the cityscape the response is very nice and we would like to come again next year also people are very interested the investors are very interested to invest in uh, Dubai properties especially in uh, MR yeah. uh, today we're participating in uh, cityscape as uh, one of the projects of Fabariq um, resort by Mantis uh, will open within the next couple of months 102 keys uh, out of that uh, 62 villas um, and we do have something else, something new to Bahrain market, that's the overwater villas. Uh, one bedroom, two bedrooms, and all of that villas are over the water with their private swimming pools and private beach. focused on bringing a more uh, wholesome experience for the consumer. We're educating them with two free courses that are available exclusively during Jewelry Arabia. Those courses are an introduction to pearls and also how to buy and care for pearls. This allows for anyone who's looking to buy pearls to come take this course for free and also learn more as a consumer. This actually is our second year over here at the exhibition Jewelry in Arabia and it's very comfortable and hopeful that we get back here again. Actually our shop is, will be here in Bahrain and you can follow us in IG, Instagram sayamsigat.official and our product is, will be almost from Thailand. Thai perfumes, Thai spa and skin care. Kitoa is a, a Japanese luxury fragrance brand. 
uh, established uh, uh, 2018 using the uh, traditional and uh, really, uh, very rare uh, tree oil, hinoki, hiba, and uh, kusunoki. Yes, and uh, so you feel the uh, Japanese uh, culture and also uh, the sophisticated and uh, very elegant world of view. The first one that, that what we have made is always with the precious stones, with the Bahraini natural pearls, it goes with the natural emeralds, natural diamonds, and Dulu Bahraini Tabie. The second one is the Bahrain's heritage, the 21 karat gold, which is Bahraini gold with Bahraini natural pearls, and then we have the classic natural pearls. So this year we are launching a lot of for the young generations, the very small items, daily wear items, and we look forward to welcome all of our customers. And my company is uh, 999. Uh, we are uh, Italian jewelry, and uh, we are here at uh, Jewelry Arabia in Bahrain. We start uh, uh, to do this show uh, five years ago, and uh, we are very happy to be here. with the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and within the Government Program 2023-2026, the Kingdom hosted the 7th edition of the Bahrain Agricultural and Livestock Production Exhibition, Marai 2024. This event is one of the largest regional exhibitions in terms of agricultural and livestock production. Six editions have been held so far, all of which have witnessed local and regional participation thanks to the excellent tourism infrastructure. This exhibition reflects the success of plans to provide an integrated work system to further enhance food security efforts, diversify its sources, and encourage investment to support the national economy. Through the 7th edition, Bahrain is keen to enhance food security efforts to complement national strategic initiatives and projects aimed at increasing the contribution of the agricultural and livestock sectors. Marai 2024 serves as a platform to showcase the Kingdom of Bahrain's rare breeds in these sectors. The aim of the exhibition focuses on enhancing agricultural and livestock production by showcasing the latest development used in advancing the industry, improving communication between farmers and buyers, and increasing interaction and trade exchange between exhibitors and investors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of today's episode. We hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we have. As always, be sure to see to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love to hear from you. This was Khalid Hijris, and until next time, good night and God bless. Mm -hmm.